Welcome and thank you for joining us today for Perfecting Kingdom Living, where you'll hear the word you need to live a prosperous kingdom lifestyle here on earth. Now, Damaris Johnson. Hello and welcome to another edition of Perfecting Kingdom Living. I am Damaris Johnson and I will be joined by my dear brother, Brother Allen. It is a pleasure for us to be able to bring to you the revelation of the new creation, the revelation that Jesus Christ gave his life for. It is a revelation that will revolutionize. Always remember this, the revolution is always sparked by a revelation. The revolution is always preceded by a, revela a divine revelation of who God is and who God desires to be to you. The revolution that your life is dependent upon, the transition, the change, the transformation that your life needs is dependent upon a revelation, a revelation of the word of the living God. And we are here to bring to you a revelation that will bring a revolution to your life. I know, I know, because I'm, I'm in the same situation and was in the same situation. Your life needs to be radically turned right side up. And notice I didn't say upside down. I said right side up because Jesus Christ did not come to turn your life upside down. He came to turn your life right side up. Right side up is where you want to be. And you will only be able to get there by a revelation of the word of the living God, as we always do. Please turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Let's start at the 15th verse. Now, I want to read this scripture because I believe it's important because there's nothing more important than the Word of God. Saved, unsaved, believer, unbeliever, the Word of God, the Word of God. It is to, it is to the believer, but it's for everybody. It's for everybody. You need to hear this Word. So I'm going to, I'm going to read this Bible so, I, so you can see something here. Look at, look at 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Look at the 15th verse. It says, and that from a child, Paul speaking to Timothy about, uh, you know, his situation, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able, the Holy Scriptures. Now, you got to understand something. The Holy Scriptures that Paul was talking to Timothy about had to be with what they grew up with uh, as far as what we would call the old, okay? But, but the Bible says all Scripture. Paul said all Scripture are given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. All Scripture, are, 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 the Spirit behind it is Holy Spirit, inspiring men. It says all Scripture. And in verse 16, we're not going to read that. It's given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof. But I want to read verse 15. It says this, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Now, now the Holy Scriptures, speaking of the Word of God, watch what, watch what the Holy Scriptures will bring to your life. Holy Scripture says this, Which are able to make thee wise. The Holy Scriptures are able to make thee wise. Everybody on the planet needs just a little bit of wisdom, if not a whole lot. They need some dimension of wisdom so that they can walk in life skillfully. Um, I looked that word wisdom up. It means to live life with skill from the, from, the, from the Greek mind. It means to live life skillfully. It means you go through life and you're not, you're not always snared or ensnared by the slightest thing. You're not always caused to be thrown off into a chaotic situation just because things don't go exactly the way you planned it. It's to be skillful. I remember the, 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 the mind that came to me, or the thought that came to my mind was I was a wide receiver when I played football. And, 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 and I played basketball as well. And we had to develop certain skills in order to navigate through defensive pressures. Well, listen, the, what, the wisdom of God, and we're talking about spiritual wisdom here, not natural wisdom. That word in the Greek for wise is spiritual wisdom. We're talking about wisdom that will enable you to navigate through the pressures of life. There's pressure that life wants to put on you. Well, in order for you to be able to overcome those pressures and avoid those pressures and navigate through those pitfalls, you're going to have to have a certain level of wisdom that comes from the Holy Scriptures, that comes from the Word of the living God. So you want to have a wisdom that comes from the Word of God that will enable you to be spiritually enriched and, power and empowered and edified. It says, the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise. Now, not just to make thee wise for no purpose. Not just to be wise so that you can do things amiss. But you can be wise enough so that you can walk into the salvation of God. It says, make thee wise unto salvation. It's the salvation which the Bible calls so great a salvation over in the book of Hebrews. The salvation that Jesus gave us is a great salvation. And the scriptures are able to make thee wise unto the greatness of the salvation that Jesus Christ gave his life for. There's a greatness that God wants to bring you into through the salvation of the word of God. But if you don't have the word... You won't enter into that greatness. 
If you don't have that word, you won't be wise enough to where you can make decisions that will cause your life to be different. The word of God is what you need to cause your life to change and transform into that life God wants you to transform it into. But it's going to take a certain level of wisdom and it's going to take you giving yourself over to read this word of God. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Then verse 16 says, All scriptures given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And brother, there's nothing more important than the word of God. And as we see here, the wisdom that we need to navigate through life and live under the umbrella of the salvation which God gives us can only come by the scriptures. Right. In the scripture, um, it says, make you wise unto salvation. It's talking about the word of God in a, into a person's heart. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that has to happen for this, to, for this transition to take place, for you to go from being um, out of touch with God to in touch with God, to have the wisdom of God, to have the glory of God upon your life, is to be born again by the Spirit. Amen to that. <laughs> you have to become a, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. All things become new. All things are new in Christ Jesus. But they're new in seed form. Mm. They're new. People say, well, they're new. How come I'm still doing X, Y, Z? They're in seed form. They have to be developed. It's like a baby. Right. The, the doctor comes with the baby. What's wrong? Oh, the baby's perfect. That means the baby has everything it needs to grow to be a healthy young adult. That's what he's telling you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean he's there yet. Right. Okay. It's in seed form. When you're born again by the Spirit of God, all old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Okay, now, brother, you just said that. Now, let, let, me, let me stop you right there. You just said, you just used an example of a newborn babe. Right. And how the doctor may say the child is perfect. The child got 10 fingers, 10 toes, two right. eyes, two ears, nose, mouth, right. everything that they're supposed to have at that particular point in the child's life. Correct. Right. So the scripture says this, that as a newborn babe. Right. So we can take that same picture of the example you just gave us and apply that to our life spiritually. Right. And then from there, as just as a natural child grows and develops, you're saying we can do the same thing spiritually. Right, that's what the Word of God is for. Um, the Word of God in Hebrews, I believe it's 4.12, it says the Word of God is alive and powerful. That's talking about the totality of God's Word. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself comes and lives within your heart mm -hmm. by his Spirit. And as you begin to develop in the things of God by feeding on the Word, you're, you're, it's, it's like you're watering the seed because it comes in seed form. Begin to water and to cultivate that which is in you, that it might grow up, you might grow up a spiritual man. Right. See, when Adam was, the Bible said he was created in the image and likeness of God, it was in seed form. Right. He wasn't fully developed yet. Mm. He had to grow into that. That's why they had the tree of life there that he could eat thereof right. and live forever. Yeah. He hadn't gotten there yet. Mm. But unfortunately, he didn't eat of the right tree. And today, even though people are born again, they're still eating from the wrong tree. Mm. Eat for the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, and trying to perfect the spiritual man. It can only be perfected by the word of God. Mm. What is born of God can only be perfected by what is God. Right. That is his word by his spirit. Right. The, the, the spirit of God, as you take that word of God, it will illuminate God to you. And what's in you will begin to come alive. Mm. It's a changed life. It's not a, it's, it was Take that back. It's not really a change right. life. It's an exchange of life. Right. Your life is changed because you have an exchange of life. And the new life that comes into you because the old things have passed away. Mm. But now, now, brother, you said this. Now, this, no, you just mentioned that what you just said. It's an exchange. It's not a change, but an exchange, right? right? right. Okay. Now, now, this thought. It's this, changed because of the exchange. It's, it, the, the life, the change comes because of the exchange. Right. Okay. Now, let's, let's, let's backtrack it a little bit, and then I'm going to let you run with it. Okay. The new creation. Right. With that in mind, I shared this thought with you the other day, and then you just begin to build it. It came to me that God's solution to the problem that man faces as it relates to sin, spiritually, as it relates to uh, his soul, his will, his mind, and emotions, right. and, as it, and as, as it relates to the, 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 the nine or the seven areas of life. That, that, you know, domestically, domestically socially, socially, economically, economically physically, physically um, um, mentally, mentally, emotionally, emotionally, spiritually, spiritually, those things, his solution to all those problems right. 
is the new creation. Right. It's the exchange of the new man for the old man. Right. Now run with that. Okay. Now, J John the Baptist started off like this. He says, he must increase, mm -hmm. but I must decrease. You must understand, the increase comes before the decrease. Right. He put his seed in you, even though you're still, the Bible says, put it this way, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Amen that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Right. That treasure, in the verse before that says this, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, yeah, yeah, yeah. the same God has shined in our hearts. Right. God Almighty has shined in our hearts by his spirit. Right. And that's the beginning of the new creation. Amen. We become born again right. by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. In at the beginning, God took that word and put it into the spirit, and life began. Right. In the new creation, life begins as God takes that word again and puts it into your spirit, mm. by his spirit, and the new creation begins. And from there, everything can be developed. Praise we God. can grow, we can, we can begin to communicate with God, we begin to receive the wisdom of God, as we feed on the word of God. We're newborn babes. But it, again, it's in seed form. Listen, bro, as, 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 as you talk, everything, and you said this earlier, Offset, everything Jesus, everything was about the new creation. Right. He came to bring that reconciliation, that, that exchange of life through the new creation that man longed for. Right. I, I believe it's in Psalms 69, it was verse 4. Right. Three, verse three four. Or four. Verse, verse 4. four. It talks about, I restored, then I restored that which I took not away. Right. See, what he restored was the fellowship that man lost from the beginning. Mm. When he died and shed his blood, that holy blood was shed. The blood of God was shed on the cross. It made a way for us to be born into his family. Man, bro, wait, wait, wait. This, 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 this thought just came to me. You said a holy God right. needed holy blood. Right. To justify, well, can a holy God who needed holy blood in order to get back to his man, recreate man, and he still be a sinner? No, 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 no. Let's not be silly. <laughs> okay. Um, um, you're either in the flesh or in the spirit. The scripture is, it, the Bible says this, and I believe it's in uh, Romans 8 and 2. They that walk in the flesh. How's this? Uh, um, um, Which one? Romans 8 and 2? Yeah. Therefore, it starts off, therefore there is now no condemnation them in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Right. The old creation under the law of sin and death. Right. The new creation under the law of the spirit. So the new creation, there's no sin in the new creation. There's no sin in the new creation. Praise God. There's no sin in the new creation. The sin comes when we don't see ourselves in Christ Jesus as God sees us. Right. As the old man is, as he's put on the cross, we don't see ourselves. Then when he died, we Amen. died with him. People talk so much about living right and holiness and right. All that's fine and good. <laughs> but if you don't die right, you ain't going to live right. Amen. People need to learn how to realize that they are dead with Christ, that that new creation can come alive. Because everything God does, he does through the new creation. The word of God is not for the old creation, not for the old man. Praise it's God. not to, to give you, uh, uh, make you a better person. It's not to refine you. That's not the word that God is for. Wait, wait hold on. Before you get going, listen, we, we got to take a break. But, but I want you to see something because I think we're on to something powerful. We're talking about, we're talking about, first of all, the importance of the word of God. Now we're talking about the new creation. And my brother just made a powerful statement. The word of God is for the new creation. We're going to go to a break. Stay with us because right after this break, we're going to get more into the power of the new creation. Hey, I pray that the first part of that message has been a blessing to you because I'm sure it blessed my life and I hope that it blessed your life. But listen, it's one thing for you to receive this word via television, uh, via the radio, but, but, but it's a whole nother thing for you to experience the presence of God in a service. And I wanna just take this time to invite you to come out and be a part of our worship experience. We like to call it an experience because we come for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to experience the presence of God. We have a service that goes on every 
every Friday night that I know with all my heart that is going to be a blessing to the region. It's not a church thing. It's not a local thing, but it's, it's something for the entire region. We come to lift up the name of our God. We come to worship with all of our might and all of our strength. And whatever happens, happens. Whatever the Spirit of God desires to do in that service, we allow him to do it. So I want to invite you to come on Friday nights. Prayer begins at 6 o'clock and the service begins promptly at 7. I guarantee you, you will be blessed. Now, let's get back to some more of that word. Welcome back. Hey, I, I want to thank you for tuning in, and I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Um, um, if, if there's something that you would like to, 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 to discuss, if there's some questions that you may have, you can email us. You can email us at, at uh, djohnson at go to the number two, the worship center dot com. Also, if you're really, really, we're, I know we're saying something that you, you've either never heard or this word is speaking to you. Uh, Father wouldn't have us on here. We wouldn't minister to somebody. You can, you can uh, revisit or, or review these broadcasts um, uh, at your leisure, at your leisure. Uh, you, you, you can go to uh, the website, the Apollo Media Center website, and you can view these broadcasts whenever you feel like it, whenever you have time. I know the times that we come on, you may not be able to uh, watch it all the time, uh, but, but you can go to the Apollo Media Center website and you can view these broadcasts. You can tell a friend to view it because I really believe the revelation that we're talking about will be a blessing to your life. And then also, you can go to our website um, at www.go2theworshipcenter.com and find out more about the ministry and what we are called to do and what we desire to bring to your life. A revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. And we're talking about the new creation, brother. And the new creation, as we stated earlier, is what Jesus gave his life for. The conclusion to the ministry and the salvation which Jesus Christ came was that the new creation may emerge again and the old man may pass away. Right, right. You were saying before we left that the word of God is designed to build up the new creation. Yes, it is. The word of God do deal anything with the old creation. You asked the question, well, can you be, um, I believe you asked, can you be uh, born a new creation and be a sinner at the same time? Yeah. It's like asking <laughs> the uh, butterfly, right. can it be a caterpillar <laughs> and a butterfly at the same time? Right, I no, like that. That's a, good. a transformation takes place. Right. But your transformation takes place. Right. That transformation took place in the spirit realm. Wait, wait, brother, say that again. I like that. Say that again. He said, asking a believer, a, a new creation, if he can be a, a new creation and a sinner, is like asking a butterfly and a caterpillar if they can be the same thing at the same time. Is that right, 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 right. Okay. Either one or the other. Right. But it's a faith proposition. Everything that we access of God is by faith. Because mm -hmm. all that we are, all that we have, and all that we can do is in Christ Jesus. Mm. It's all in this word, the perfect law of liberty. We have to see ourselves in him, and then it becomes to come alive. We have to see it. It's a faith proposition. He talks about in Ephesians, um, the first chapter, having, I believe, about the 17th or 19th verse, having the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, hmm. his calling upon your life. It ain't about you. Right. It's about what he's put in you. You become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You have to realize this and see this. And once you see it, you can begin to apprehend it. But we don't see it, we can't apprehend it. The, the new creation lives on the word of God. The old creation lives on the things of the flesh. You have to choose which one you're going to live by. Jesus put it this way. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. As a, a dear brother once said, he said, <laughs> you can either live by, some live by, by bread. bread and others by the word of God. Depending on what you want to live by. It's a faith proposition to access the things of the kingdom of God. It's by faith. The just shall live by faith. We have to access the things of the kingdom by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more words you have in you, the more potential for faith you have in you, the more the th things of God you'll be able to see God speaking to your heart clearly. Well, brother, everything is pointing to the new creation then. Everything. Everything that God put in here is for the new creation. Wow. You know, I believe it was, in, it was in John 16, about, what is it, about the fourth verse, where yeah. it talked, talked about um, these right, things. Right, 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 right. Was it the 12th verse? Was yeah, it 12th? I have many I things to say unto you. Yeah, I think about the 12th verse. Right. I have many things to say unto you, uh, the gospel of John, mm -hmm. but, but you can't bear them now. Mm -hmm. How be it when the spirit of, where is that? Um, it's in verse. Um, yeah. I have many things, the 12th 12, verse, yeah. 
to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, when he, mm -hmm. the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Amen. See, they couldn't comprehend or take in everything that Jesus had for them right then. They couldn't really deal with the things he talked about in the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> right. That astounded them beyond measure. Right. You understand? But the things that he spoke and he, he's speaking to us now is speaking through the spirit. He's speaking to our heart. It's the things that only the new creation can live out. Right. So, well, I can't right. do that. Yes. We yes. know you can't right. do right. it. That's there. why right. he made you Amen. born again. Oh, that's beautiful. That's I can't beautiful. live right. Yeah, he knows this. Right. Matter of fact, can't nobody live right without him. Right. You know, we all need a savior. And realize that, that everything that we have to live by is the word of God. You can't live right. You can't feed the new creation things of the bread of life. <laughs> right. The life that's to be fed is from the word of God. The word of God feeds the new creation. The only thing he can live on to develop and grow and be all that God would have him to be. Amen. So, 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 brother, that's just a, so a lot of times people are reading, picking up their Bible, they're reading it. Man, I can't do that. Man, that's hard. Right. How, how, or they're man. trying to think in terms of, I want to be a better person today. Right. No, you never be a better person. You're the same old miserable person you was <laughs> for the last 20, 30, 40, or whatever many years it might be. Right. He didn't come here to make you a better person. Jesus didn't come to die on that cross to make you be a better, or do the best you can. Right. He came that you might accept him self into your heart right. that you might be one with him as it talks about in john the 17th chapter right. might be one the only new creation become one with god because he's born again of god and there's no sin in the new creation let's say that only only the new creation can become one with god only the new creation flesh can't come one become one with no god. no 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 you can't see the things. you can't understand the things of god right you understand through the flesh through reasoning through logic it, it'll never happen you know the, the bible says this get wisdom it's the principal thing. Wisdom comes from the word of God. Mm. It's there for the new creation to grasp and to understand and to take in. Mm. After you get this wisdom, then you get an understanding with your mind. Right. God will give you understanding as you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. Begin to understand the things that God has given you. He's given you a new birth. You'll understand everything about the new birth. Right. We don't understand all the things of the, of, the, of the glory of God that he wants to do through us and with us and by us. Mm -hmm. But as we begin to feed on the word of God, begin to worship God and begin to praise him and to feed on his word as his word comes alive in us. As we worship God, as we pray, as we do the things of God, the word becomes alive in us. We get a glimpse of the glory of God and begin to do the things that he would have us to do mm -hmm. and to be the person God would have us to be. So, so <clears throat> when we're talking about the new creation, is there sickness in the new creation? Oh, no, no sickness. Is there disease in the new creation? Is, is disease in heaven? No, there's no disease. No, in no. God, God, God gave you the best, his very best, his masterpiece. Mm. It can't be improved upon. Mm. That's what the church is. Right. We are the body of Christ. You try to tell me there's supposed to be sickness in the body of Christ? Is there fear in the new creation? No, fear, no. Perfect love casts out fear. And God has given you his perfect love, his agape love. He's come to, the Bible says this, this way, and I believe it's in Romans 5 and 5. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost or by the Holy Spirit. Mm. That's the perfect love of God. And John said, perfect love casts out fear. Amen. But fear worketh torment. Right. You should be able to run to God. The Bible says in Hebrews, we come boldly before the throne of his grace. Amen. Boldly, come to God boldly right. through the blood of Jesus Christ his son. Right. It's a faith proposition. All this is for the new creation. The old mm. creation can't live, oh, can't live in the yeah. glory. Right. Can't go to glory. That's why even your body has to go through a metamorphosis and a change mm. that this mortal must put on immortality, this corruption must put on incorruption, you know, to be in the, in the kingdom and right. the, the time to come. But right now, as you're living, God is glorified as you live his life right now in this flesh. That's why it says through we have the this new creation. Through the new creation, only through right. the new creation. The new right. creation only can feed on the word of God. You ain't getting no word in you. The new creation ain't going to do anything. Let, let, let me read a scripture real quick. In, in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, uh, the 24th verse, I want to read the scripture as we relate to living through. See, the new, the new, the new creation, is, it says, and, and, ye, and, and that ye put on, let's go back. Verse 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, when you see 
new man and new creation is one and the same thing. Okay, the, the spirit of it is the same thing. So the new creation was created in righteousness. In other words, uh, the word in there can be say can, was created by righteousness or was created right. of righteousness. Right, right. Go ahead. Righteousness, right. And then don't give you the last part. I said, and, and true, true holiness. holiness. Right. Holiness. Yeah. See, the conclusion of the matter is what God demanded from the beginning. Holiness mm. unto the Lord. Go back into Exodus. Mm. Holiness unto the Lord. That's what God demanded from the beginning. Right. He wanted his man to be holy. Now, brother, when we, when we bring up holiness, though, we got to be clear. Because some folks think holiness means you can't wear jeans and no, you no. can't wear hats and you, gotta, you can't do it. Can't. No, no, no. So holiness, talk, what? talk about holiness what holiness is. is. talking about being separated unto the things Say of God. Say it one more time. Holiness is being separated unto the things of God. Okay. As you see the light, you walk in, in, right. in the light. Right. The Bible says this. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Right. Just like a child. He might do a thousand things wrong. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that baby when he comes out and maybe crying and whetting on himself and doing mm -hmm. a lot of things that aren't, you know, babbling, can't talk about. The baby's perfect because mm -hmm. he don't know any better. Mm -hmm. And in God's eye, we're perfect because that's where we are. Right. Now, as you see the light, you have to begin to walk in the light. Right. So a child of a, of, a, of a greater age has a more responsibility. You're going to chastise the child when he does something wrong because he didn't do what he knew to do what was right. Right, right. Same way we got with us. God sees us in his son, perfected. We have to begin to see that. Question. New creation, he is holy. Yeah, he's true holy. I'll tell you right here, true holiness. <laughs> Not only said holiness, it said true holiness. Right. The Bible, word of God says, put it this way, holiness without which no man shall see God. So, but true holiness right. begins in the new creation. Right. So you can't get holiness, say, if you start with the new creation. Is what we're saying. You're saying what? You can't you can't live out holiness save you start right. with the new creation. Right. So the new creation is the beginning of your me walking. Right. Okay. Right. Just like a baby coming into the into the world. Right. As the, the, the husband and the wife get together and create that child, that's that a product of the of, of, of the of the father and the mother. Mm -hmm. So we're a product of the spirit and of the word. Amen. Come together and the new creation comes forth and whatever was in the father and the mother. It, it comes together and that produces the, uh, the child. So whatever in the spirit and the word comes together and create the new creation in us. Praise and that's God. what we are. Praise there ain't God. no sin, ain't no sickness, ain't no weakness, ain't no fear, ain't no foolishness, ain't none of that. Wow. Praise we are born of God. It tells you, we've been born of God. Mm. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, the children of God. Mm. joint heirs with Jesus Christ himself mm. because God had to have something that was that was um, had the um, integrity mm -hmm. in the capacity in the to, 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 to hold his word wow. to hold his word so he, so he had to come up with a new creation he had to nothing else could be worth nothing else could help nothing in this whole wide world could be worthy wow. he had to come up with perfection that's what he had to come up with, because right. his word is perfect. Right, right. His word is perfect. And what he placed his word in had to be worthy of that. And that's what God has put in our heart. He's commanded the light to shine out of darkness. God himself has shined in our hearts. Amen. Brother, listen, I hate to cut this off, bro. I hate it, but, but we got to go. Listen, the, the new creation, this is what it's about. This is what it's about. And I really want you to get a hold of this. I really want you to grab hold of this new creation. So I need you to view this, review this broadcast if you need to. Email us. Uh, we, we're, we're doing a series on it in, in the service. Our service times will be up on the screen. Um, I, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want to I, I encourage you to seek the Lord with all your heart and find out who you are and what, you've been a, what you are able to do through the new creation. God bless you, and we'll see you next time right here. Remember, you're beloved, you're blessed, you're destined to prosper, and you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. God bless you. See you next time right here from Perfecting Kingdom Living. I'm healed by the power of His Word. Thank you for joining us today. We expect that you heard something that will help bring you closer to living out your kingdom purpose. If this message has been a blessing to you, please contact us and share your thoughts with us. Join us again next week for Perfecting Kingdom Living.